Reaction. Welcome to Red VTV's Instant Reaction, supported by Chapel House Cars for the 2024 season, following St. Helens' 14 points to 8 loss this evening over in Catalans. Now, Kevin, we've not watched the game together. You've been lucky enough to watch on BBC Three. I've been yes. fortunate to lose to listen to Sky. Um, my overwhelming feeling, having watched that on TV, is I think we've been done, done by some of the officiating, done by some of our own ill discipline, and done by our failure just to take our chances when we've been presented them. I would definitely agree with you on the fact that we had, especially once again, like the Wigan game, where we had all that possession in the first half and territory and haven't made enough of it. And I think that is our Achilles heel. Um, I think, uh, saying it from a Saints point of view, obviously, as we do, I'm saying we've lost that game rather than Catalan winning it. Um I think there's a number of individuals who have played well and have played well individually. Our defence has been a solid unit, but I just think we're, we're not quite firing right going forward. Yeah. I just think, even even if you're saying we're not right firing going forward, I'll go to the last point I made about just not being quite clinical enough. Um, yeah, that's it. it. One in the first half, John Benison gets put in. A foot in touch. Uh, one in the second half, Lewis Dodd is over the line and just needs to make sure the point of the ball touches the green and doesn't do so. You could argue that Dodd try, non-try, was the instant that basically it was the it was the game changer. If he scores that, Saints go on to win that comfortably. Um, you could do. I'd also point to uh, Daryl Clark having to leave the field, um, which was about two minutes after that. And then there was just that period round about the hour mark where Theo Fires, I think it was, puts the long booming kick downfield just to clear his lines. And John Benison, who's been absolutely magnificent under the high ball all season, um, makes an error and knocks on. We managed to get the ball back after Catalan uh, throw a passing touch. And then a, a ball which probably... It's not the greatest pass in the world, but Lomax gets two hands to it, uh, albeit on the bounce, and knocks it on. And they're just when errors are coming from players that you can trust and absolutely trust during a game, then you know that it's not going right for us. Um, so you have you have the Benison error. Two minutes later, you've got the Lomax error. Two minutes later, Catalan score. What is the match winning try? Yeah. Um, when I say about, I wonder whether the officiating did us a little bit, when you watch the replays of that try, he goes through a gap that you wonder how on earth has he just walked in there. You watch the replays, Curtis Sirenin is quite clearly barged in the back and it's not given. Um, a couple of things didn't go our way. I thought that one didn't go our way. I thought there was a clear hit drop. On Jack Wellsby, which if it isn't banned this week, I will be amazed given that James Bell got a ban. Um, and when the video ref has had time to look at it, and we've all seen it on the first look, I don't get how it can then be ignored and then the MRP will pick it up in the week. Yeah, that's it. It's I mean, it's gonna come across that we're whinging, but you know what? The game's being ref, you've got you've got the ability to ref the game and yeah, he'll be banned for it. If, you, if you're going to, like, the 10 minutes that he'd have probably got, because he'd have probably got binned for it. I don't think he'd have got sent off for it. He'd have probably got binned for it. But you've got the opportunity to ref the game there rather than just having it re-refed on Monday, haven't you? We've got a special guest. Have we? If, it's, if it connects to his audio. Can't hear you yet, Dave. We'll see if it, we'll see if it works. At least he's still alive. <laughs> can you hear us, Dave? I'm with you. Hey, can you hear me? We can hear you. Are you okay, Dave? Can you hear me? How are you, lads? Yeah, not too bad. What did you uh, think of the game from being in the ground? Oh, listen, I'm not gonna lie to you, pal. Um, 
half time, I thought we were we were well in control of the game. Um, I always thought that we needed another score, and we got it. And I need to look at it again. If you lads have watched it on the TV, if that's it, if if that's not a try from Dodd, then I'll accept that. But we just never got away from him, and and. And, that, and, that, and that's why we've lost tonight, unfortunately. Yeah, he, he didn't get the ball to the ground in the end. Um, and so I, is, I said, is, is, is it definitely not a try? Yeah, yeah definitely, definitely, not, definitely not a try. Well, I'll, I'll, I'll go with that. I'll go with that. Like, you know, I'll, for me, we were all in there. We thought it was a cast at him. We've got the advantage of a replay, and you have. Um, but you know what? We weren't... We were clinical enough, and at the time I thought we, we, we were so far ahead of them. We were, and we've allowed them to come back into us ultimately, and we've lost. We are that, we were that, but it's so frustrating. I genuinely thought we'd, we'd take this to the police tonight. I did, I did, I put it on my four Facebook on, on Twitter or X, whatever you call it. That I've been here every single time, bar one, and I've never known when we'll win. And tonight I thought we would win because I thought we would we had a really good chance. And I'm really, really disappointed that we've lost today. Really disappointed. And listen, it is what it is. Um it's down it's not down to individuals and, and what have you, team play, whatever. There are team, there are players, and we love them. And we'll be there, we'll be there next week. And watch them again against Warriors at home. Because they're our team. But we should have won tonight. We've slipped up tonight big time. And I am disappointed, but we know the reasons why. Because we we, we we were so far ahead at half time in terms of how we dominated possession. But they were still always in it. And that's how it was. Nice one. Good atmosphere though in the ground, Dave. Oh, Dave, Dave. Phenomenal atmosphere. Like the 1,200 people here tonight going home absolutely gutted, gutted. Um, because I think we all set up thinking we're going to win the game tonight and we're all going home oh, perhaps devastated like honestly uh, it's it's so frustrating properly frustrating can't tell you how bad it is well we'll look we'll get it uh, back on the horse next week against Warrington take it out on them in the the um, well, yeah, uh, quarter final I'm sure listen um, I hope we do um, um, we just deserve to win tonight. I, I, I thought at half time, getting that, getting that score before half time, I thought, you know what? Play real. We got get the next score, which we did, and obviously you, you, you guys saying it was, it was not a try. You know it, that that gets given, and we win by ten to fifteen points, guys. If I wanted to upset you, Dave, if I wanted to upset you. I'll tell you their last try. I think it should have been ruled out for a barge on Sirenin in the back. Listen, it is what it is. There's not what we can do about it now. We've we've come out of it 14-8 down. And now we're waiting for the bus to take us back to Perpignan. But I'm not sure it's coming. So <laughs> they could be forcing you walking now, like so. Which is not clever. Uh, but it is what it is, like so. But that's what but, but that's what coming in does to you, like. Last year, they were a great side. This year, they're a decent side, but they're nowhere near where they were last year. And they've beaten us. And it galls me. Proper galls me. I think I think the one thing that they've got there, Dave, is they they have a way of playing and they rough you up, they'll grub you. And I think sometimes we are guilty of falling into the trap. Dave, you know what? I think you're dead right. I think you're dead right on that. Like, is that... You know, we played some good rugby in the first half. We played some really good rugby in the first half. Um, and we cut them open at times. Um, but they kept... You know, listen, they're a good... They're a great side, Catalan. You can't knock it about them. But we cut them open at times. Well, as we try, like, it was like a 10-year-old scoring, like, in the first half. It was like a 10-year-old scoring. It was that easy. But they're a good, they're a good, they're a good side. They're a, good, they're a really good side. Um, I just oh, listen. I, I'm so. Can I swear? Dave, we'll let you go. 
We find your bus. <laughs> and, I hope, I hope, and I hope there's a pint with your name on it. I'm, I am. Tonight. Oh, yellow yeah. card. <laughs> yellow card. <laughs> Tonight because ten minutes. Oh, ten minutes. Be, because I thought, we, I, I thought, I thought over, 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 over sixty minutes, seventy minutes, with a better side. And we were, we, don't get me wrong. They deserved to be where they were, and we never put them to bed, and we should have put them to bed, but we didn't, and that's where we are, and we're all gutted. But it is always, Mister Pal, our bus is here to take us back to Catalan Centre, so I have to leave you. Enjoy, enjoy the rest of your evening as much as you can. I'm sure you will. Have a good red feet. Have a good red feet, and I will speak to you soon. Nice one. See you later. See you later. Yeah. See you later. Colourful as ever. <laughs> well, listen, I know he's not like the 80 minutes, but it looks like he's had a good day. <laughs> <laughs> it looks like he's on a cracker. Uh, I um, want to pick up on. on I want to pick up on something that that he said there, where he said Catalan are nowhere near where they were last year. I do get what he means by that. I think they're a good unit, and I think uh, obviously them, them losing Abdul early on um, has probably hit their kicking game. But when you've got a, a scrum half of the likes of Theo Farge. He's not a spectacular scrum half. He's more functional. But what he does, he does very well. But you wouldn't say necessarily they've got the game breakers that they might have had of, of years gone by. And I go back to my point of, I think we've lost that rather than Catalan kind of taking it away from us. I think we're our own worst enemies at times. That first half that Dave's just spoken about, uh, we were creating chances but we had good territory and would make an error off the back of it. And that would be either in discipline, in discipline with the ball. It would just be a, an addition of things going wrong at the wrong time. And then in the second half, we didn't really create anything. Lewis Dodds, no try, possibly the, the, the biggest one, obviously. But there was no, or I didn't feel like there was much sustained pressure on their line. And that is where we've gone wrong tonight. And as I say, individuals can hold the hands up, uh, can hold their hands up and say, "I've I've done a good job tonight." I just think at times, cohesively, we weren't there, and that's what's cost us the game. Yeah. Do you know what? The one where Lewis Dodds not grounded. The amount of times I reckon, if you watch a rugby player who goes over the try line without anybody trying to tackle them and just bounces like that with their arm, and it just gets given. The fact he gets looked at is because um, Rouge then holds him up afterwards. Yeah. It, if there's no man there, that, it, he bounces over, throws the ball away, he gets given. Um, I, 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 I'm not, listen, I, I'm not going to blame Lewis Dodd in the slightest no. for that at all. It's just the way he's carrying the ball, isn't it, to make sure it's safe. Um, when, I, when you say it, I think we've been done a little bit. One, and well, I want to say. I've not said that. You've said that. I've, I've not said, said, oh, said actually, that. <laughs> And one instance, the penalty um, against George Delaney at the end. Now, for me, that's a learning curve for George Delaney there. Yeah. Um, when you act, If you go back and look at that instance again, Mike McMeekin puts his head in a little bit in the tackle. He leans his head in into George and puts the heads together. When it goes to ground, George is aggrieved by that, punches out. Causes a bit of a melee, they get the penalty off the back of it. George hasn't gone in with the head. It's the other way. It's the other way around. Is and it, I'm not saying gone in with the head. He's just touched him with the head um, into George, and George has reacted. It's professional our ass play from Mike McMeekin. If you want to use the if you want to use the terminology, and George has fell for it, and we've been pinged off the back of it. And listen, twelve eight or fourteen eight, it probably doesn't make a difference at the end of the day, but. You could also say that penalty probably could have gone our way if they'd have seen what happened first of all. Rutting stags. I, you know what? I'm, I'm made up that uh, George Delaney as a young lad has, has stood up for himself as well. As yeah. uh, he, He's not took a backward step there. Um, but yeah, it's a learning curve for him. Um, I think you would see that 99 times out of 100, if not 100 times out of 100, that the attacking team is going to get the penalty, though, or the team in possession is going to get the penalty, though. 
going back to the um the initial lineup, Sioni obviously got named at centre rather than Ben Davis. Um did we miss Sioni in the middles? Possibly so. Um because you're asking, you're obviously asking a big job for George Delaney to come in and start. And I thought he had a good first stint to refer to him. Um, and it's almost like you see that the the full the full complement of Morgan Knowles and Alex Walmsley and George Delaney on the bench for a, 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 an extended period. Obviously, when they're having a rest, and you do possibly think we need that little bit more experience down the middle, possibly. I'm saying that, and I'm going to caveat it with James Bell's been playing out of his skin all season. And I think Jake Wingfield, and Jake Wingfield deserves a lot of raps for his performance tonight. I thought he's been very, very good tonight for, again, a young lad who's not necessarily had a great run of it with uh, injuries. It, it Possibly when you're taking off your full unit, as we do, as we do all the time, that probably shows you how much we miss the likes of Matty Lees and how much maybe Sioni should have been in the middles, possibly. My my only argument there would be I don't think we gain anything from having Sioni at centre. That you would that you wouldn't gain from playing Ben Davis there. I don't possibly- I don't think Sioni's I don't think Sioni's any better in the centre than Ben Davis. And therefore I think you gain more from Sioni being in the middles. Possibly you get um, a bit more of that relieving run from having a forward in the centres. Possibly yeah, you get maybe, a little yeah. bit more aggression from him. Uh, they're all possibilities. I don't think Sioni's necessarily had a bad game at centre. Um, but as you say, do do we miss him when we need to step up? Because the, the, the Catalan pack is still a big pack. It's still huge. When when I heard they were missing uh, McLaurin um, from uh, Hooker, I thought, oh, that's big for them. That is massive. And to be fair to the Costa, who stepped in and, and started, he, he's he's done well getting them around the park. Um, maybe we have Miss Sioni more in the middle, even just another step in. Um, I suppose the the result means that you can you can question these and say, is that decision vindicated? If we win the game, then we say, yeah, of course it was right. Yeah, and do you know what? Listen, let's give Catalan some raps as well. They've done what they do best. They're good on home soil. They've gone down to 15 um, players and come away with the results, and that's a big for them. And maybe when I say Saints and Wigan are ahead of the pack, maybe Catalan aren't as far behind as, as we like to think, especially, obviously, when you've got to go over there. Yeah, I think I think going over there is, is massive. Um, I think it, it's just almost that. No matter what we do, so we were over there yesterday, if we go in on the game day, it, it it's just that... I'm not going to say a mental block because what is it? Six years since we've won over there. Um, I'm not saying it's a mental block, but it's just different, isn't it? It's different to jumping on a coach and going down to 62, or just going up, up the road to Wigan. There's nothing wrong with the pres- uh, with the what's the word? preparation. Preparation. <laughs> this presentation. Nothing wrong with the preparation. We went over yesterday. We've done everything properly. At the end of the day, Catalan are just a good side at home. Um, oh, yeah. and, and to be fair, they're not too bad away either. I think they've beat us seven out of the last 11 now. Um, what did you make of the Conrad tackle in the first half to prevent Johnson's try? I thought it was a cracking tackle. I thought he's, he's gone across with his arms. Um, and as Johnson has done what Johnson does, and dive in the air and twist his body and contort. Um, it's made it look like um, Connie's gone in with his shoulder, but when you actually see it from that view behind the, the sticks, the, the, the in-goal area that Connie's defending, you can see that he's gone in arms first. Um, I think it's great work from from someone who, who is, his defence can be maligned a little bit. Um, I I, I, yes, well, yeah. Well, they, they said on commentary there was the kick hey, in if behind. You're gonna, if you're going to call me out for saying we got done, I'm going to call you yeah. out for saying, Connie. But yeah, we posted that video, by the way, on the Twitter feed, um, showing Connie going in with the arms first. And as Johnson tries to do the Tommy Mack dive into the corner, he literally just goes over the side of Connie. What's Connie meant to do? Let him score. Yeah, exactly. I don't think I, I don't think there's, there's much wrong with it. And that therefore... Person. How out of order is Steve McNamara going after Liam Moore at half time, according to Sky reports? 
um, to say it was a shoulder charge. Is that not trying to influence the officiating? Yeah, it's not on really. Um, you don't like to see it. We'd call it out if it was well or doing it. Um, so I, I don't like it. If you if you want to have a word, don't do it in front of the cameras. Don't start riling up fans. There's no need for it. Um, if we're going back to on field though, I thought when Castlan brought on um, Satai, he was a bit of a ch- game changer for for them. He seemed to sometimes not even be rolling forward when he got the ball, and he'd still make valuable metres for them. It's worth up to stats will show he made about 43 metres or something like that, but it just seemed like he was tough for us to get down, drags more people into the tackle, and then all of a sudden, listen, they're not breaching our defence here, there and everywhere, but it just, it, it forces you to get involved in a tackle that you probably shouldn't be need to be getting involved in. Um, and, and that was a good tactic from them. Yeah. As you say, we are clunky in attack still. Um, yeah. We just need to try and get through Warrington next week in the quarter final, And then we'll have a training exercise the week after against Hull <laughs> at home where we can yeah. work out how to score in many different ways. Oh, listen, the Saints' way will be that game will finish 24-12. Yeah. Um, it is disappointing tonight. As uh, Steve Smith, Smudge, on our feed, with, on one of the groups, basically said, we'll meet them again. Um, the top three sides will beat each other this year. Um, it's a really disappointing evening this, mo- uh, this morning, this evening. But if one or two things go your way, you come away with a win there. Um, we've not won there for six years. It hasn't done us up any harm four hours of the last five. Uh, so let's open year six. It, it doesn't have an effect on us again. Yeah, exactly. I think sometimes um, we do this instantly and people will take to social media in- instantly and um, we'll have a bit of a knee-jerk reaction. We try and be a little bit more measured on occasion, depends how many drinks you've had, I suppose. Um, but yeah, listen, it's not going to define our season that unless we start, unless we go on a massive losing run because um, because our heads go down. But as long as we keep our defensive line, we've kept them to two tries tonight. Uh, is it two that they've scored? Um, yeah. uh, Kevin, at the end of the day, if you if, if I offered you before kickoff. Catalan scoring 14 points at home. Yeah, uh, yeah you'd take, take it because you think, well, we we were more than capable of scoring more. I just think we were we were off. We were yeah. off tonight going forward. And that is the that is the, the issue. Um that we were we're just I, I don't know where the, the issue is. I don't know if the I don't think the issue is necessarily in the halfbacks as such. I think obviously they've got a part to play because they're the playmakers. But I just think we we just we're just not clicking. We're trying some stuff, and sometimes it looks great, and other times like we're having to force it because we're we're looking to get them six points to take it level and us go to uh, golden point. Um, it is what it is, mate. We we've lost over to. A, a decent Catalan team. I'd imagine that quite a few teams are going to go over and that exactly that's going to happen to them. Yeah. Right. We'll finish there. I haven't even moaned about the missed head contact on Johnny Lomax. And I'm not even going to moan about the commentary with the, the random shout mid sentence, just to like scare the cat. If you've got one, uh, I can't watch on the telly every week, Kev. No, I hate watching it on the telly, but to be fair, Matt Newsom on the BBC, um he was he was pretty good to be fair. It's it's one of those that you you're not I'm not coming away from it thinking um Matt Newsom has has ruined that game for me. I'm should thinking have turned over. he should have turned over. Um yeah, I thought I know some people will say, No, it was all right. I, I thought he was good. I thought he was good, enjoyed it. Um, yeah, it was terrible. Yeah, oh, fair enough. Sorry. But let, let's hope this is the one and only time this year that we're having to watch on TV. But at least we have had a live correspondent from the stadium. Just to make <laughs> sure just to make sure that this video wasn't a total fraud. <laughs> a burly alive one. 
Um, I, I've been I've, I've been watching Saints live today, so uh, I'm I'm taking that one because I went watching the reserves earlier. So at least I've been. Well, I've been watching one of my teams live today, and they did win. <laughs> Sorry, Cliff. Yeah. Well, I've been watching one of mine, and they won. So somebody said to me before. Why can't Everton and Saints both win on the same day ever? And I went, well, to be fair, that's not usually Saints' fault. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's fair enough. That's fair enough. Oh, there we go. Right. Uh, how did the reserves go, by the way? Uh, they won. They won, and the um, it was a. It was a good performance from the first half. They were completely off it. They were 12-8 down at the break and they were they kept on getting good position, but then again not doing very much with it. Um and Wakefield took the couple of chances that they had. And then in the second half, it was a completely different game, possibly playing with the wind as well. But they just Everything that they did, including um, Harry Robertson going 90, 95 metres on an intercept. Uh, Wonga Blake was just shepherding a, a Wakefield attacker into touch and the Wakefield attacker panicked, threw the ball inside. Robertson got it and just absolutely heard his way to the line. Um, and it was a deserved win uh, on a on a blustery day. Um, but yeah, it was... Uh, it was, it was good to go and watch. Good to go and watch and, and see some of the first team and fringe first team players play. Yeah, good to see the likes of Wonga Blake being able to pass on his expertise to the young lads as well. Mate, he looks, he looked a level above. He wasn't necessarily the best player. Oh, I'd like back, to think he is. But but it, it wasn't it wasn't that he'd gone sulking in the reserves. That's what I mean. Yeah. It, it, he looked like he was trying to pass on bits. He was organising his half back in front of him. Obviously, a young kid who's playing next to him, he was like moving him physically, moving him closer to the rook. So they had like the room out on his side. Um, there was a couple of passes that he's made which which looked good. Um, he just, as I say, he, he he looked like he wasn't sulking about it. Um, regardless of how he's gone, to, regardless of how he's gone today, Kev. Given what you've seen from Saints tonight, does he get back in next week? Given that Pierce is Pierce back next week? Was it one game? It, it, no, it Pierce he might miss a game at HIA. Might be sorry. Yeah, yeah, he may he may end up missing another game. Um, he possibly does. You know, he possibly or does because you might want to move oh, Sioni. Yes. Yeah, if you want to move Sioni up and up and out of there, then you possibly give him the run. Um, he played at left centre. One hundred percent, Kev. You one hundred percent right. I just completely forgot about Sioni. Yeah, yeah. It, well, there you go. That's it. That's that's yeah. what you would. Uh, that's what you would do. Uh, but as I say, I don't think he was necessarily the the standout player. Johnny Vaughan uh, was very good, as we'd expect, and uh, Leon Cowan. The thirteen, um, who's got a first team squad number, he got through an absolute ton of work uh, and was very good as well. Uh, as I say, finished twenty eight sixteen. Imagine being as good as Leon Cowan and having Morgan Knowles and James Bellardia. Oh, you'd be gutted, wouldn't you? Well, you wouldn't because what you've got to do is you've got to keep working to try and displace one of them. James Bell's what twenty nine now, so I know it's not one of them that's going to happen possibly in the next year or two, but you keep earning your contract, you keep knocking on the door and you get that spot that is, a, we'll call it a Sam Royal at the minute spot. You possibly move up into nearer the top 25, then you move into a spot that you call uh, the Sam Royal where you're on the fringe of the first team and then you've got to look at breaking in. And again, Leon, you look at likes of James Batchelor, Joe Batchelor, not his brother, uh, you look at the likes of Joe Batchelor and you think he's got in from coming from the lower leagues. Why can't I do it from the academy? Just looking at our social media feed, you know Saints have got beat when you've got names with random numbers trying to give you jip. Oh, yeah. Random name, bunch of numbers. Yeah, brilliant. It's not even the LinkedIn bio ones either. <laughs> <laughs> right, yeah. that's enough. I it's often, that's nice. I often wonder why people, I often wonder why people put pictures of cats in the bio, but yeah. I don't know why they're all Saints fans, but there <laughs> we go. Don't forget. 
to like, share, and subscribe, and we'll catch you in a week for uh, the build-up to a big club against a little club. Catch you soon. <laughs> <laughs> Lead with the chin, Kevin. Lead with the chin. Oh, David. <laughs>